Hello guys, I'm um, waiting for parts for my TZR engine and uh, I thought I'd show you some tech behind the engine. I'm only looking down on it, I shouldn't be looking at the camera. Uh, however, I'll show you one thing. There's the Piaggio twin waiting for parts for that one also. And uh, yeah, I'll turn the camera around and uh, we'll talk. Oh, oops, we'll talk some about um, the tech around this engine. Oops, a lot of tools. Yeah, here it is. Uh, I've been trying some new stuff. Uh, I'm about to try some new stuff. I have uh, cleaned the whole engine and uh, painted it and made it beautiful. And um, I, I bought some new pistons, new busners. These are for Yamaha YZ125, 1989 year model. YZ125, 1989. I got some new main bearings still here, and these are water couplings for the heads. And uh, let's look at first on the fuel pump setup. It's quite easy. This is the crank trigger. And this is the drive for the fuel pump. I got a belt dri driving it. And then the trigger. Uh, let's see. Um, now I can't. Oh, yes, I can. The trigger located right there. And I have made uh, the holes oval so I can find adjust if I want to. But. Uh, uh, one can also adjust that in the software for Max SU. As long as there are uh, TDC and uh, some, uh, the, the less, the minor distance or the least distance from TDC should be at least the maximum advance you're about. So let's say I'm running 35. Uh, 35 degrees advance as, as top value uh, this trigger should be at least 35 degrees before TDC uh, I actually don't know but I always used to set it up like that and uh, here's the throttle bodies now I haven't got the secondary injectors because they are mounted in the frame these are the primary injectors and um, uh, air temp sensor. The water temp sensor is uh, located in the in the water cooler. And I can pull the wire. As you can see, hard with one hand. Yeah. And uh, when pulling the wire, this is also a TPS. I got a wire splitter. The rest is in the chassis. And um, when pulling the throttle, this one and, and the blades are moving at the same time. And this is, of course, a nitrous nozzle. I'm running the nitrous dry. I'm adding fuel with uh, Max ESU when active. I haven't set that up perfect yet, but I have tried it and it made some power. And later the crankshaft decided to went, went south. And um, not depending on the, on the nitrous though. It was, yeah, well, old. Oh, Makita battery low charger is telling me it's done. And, um, however, the crank is new. Uh, bought some parts from uh, Yambits in UK. I also bought uh, new rods for uh, RD350. Those are five millimeters longer. And I bought TC style uh, main bearings uh, big end bearings and as I said I got new main bearings uh, for the outer but I'm waiting for the seals that um, I thought they were coming today but hopefully this week anyway so I can't put the ending together the, the final uh, the final um, assembly so let's look at the cylinder sum I have a, 
as I said, shimmed up with 5mm extra. Uh, where is it? Is it possible to see? Yeah, right here you can see 5mm shim. As the rods are 5mm longer. And uh, the new pistons are here. I have some old dirty ones as I measured uh, squish and uh, measured also the total duration of opening. And I have lifted the cylinders a little bit from from earlier year because now with the new bearing and the new rod that's longer I feel it's more safe to let it sing at higher RPMs. So I'll probably aim for getting peak power at 12,000, 12,500, something like that. Maybe even 13,000. The rod ratio now, stroke to rod ratio is 2.2. It's the equal as uh, same high revving engines like dirt bikes, 85cc dirt bikes and such. So there's no problem. Uh, and as this engine is quite short stroke. It's fi 56, 56 bore and 50 stroke. So they are possible to rev high. And uh, I'm trying a new design of the combustion chamber. Uh, I had earlier very large squish area and uh, quite high compression ratio. Now I altered that because um, yeah, I want to try stuff. I want I wanted to rev, and uh, big squish area is often killing RPM at, at top. So I made this the donut shape and uh, less squish area. This is 42%, if I remember correctly. Uh, me and numbers. I need to write them up and read them from the note I'm making. I'm trying to always try to remember numbers, but I always, I always fail. But when I was doing this, I was doing it by the note I made. Uh, what else? Yes, I tried to run a very, very, very tight uh, gap, squish gap, right? That's, as it is a new setup, crank, rod, bearings, everything's new. So I tried to run really tight. I ran one millimeter earlier and uh, it revved a little bit be better than on uh, I had before that I had 0 0.8 millimeter and uh, I calculated actually wrong the, the squish velocity and it was very high that's probably one reason because why it uh, killed the over range over rpm there are high RPMs. So now I'll run very tight, 0 0.6 millimeters, and this band and uh, 14 to 1 compression. A little bit lower compression, but uh, I can go higher, yes, because alcohol can go take a lot of compression. But I noticed when doing only 1 8 mile drag runs you got such short gearing in the gearbox and you can't reach the exhaust temp you want to, to get it to rev as it should so thereby I tried to actually spill out some energy some heat to make heat in the pipes to get it to tune at the correct RPM yes I might lose 3 to 5 horsepower but it's worth it um, I can always adjust that with this one later on. That's why it's actually located there. Uh, what else? This is a um, TDR 250 engine from the beginning, but uh, I got the TZR gearbox, longer first gear, and uh, yeah, some uh, slight other changes on the gearing also. And then I'm running uh, clutch discs are from uh, oh, there are somewhere else they are from uh, the four stroke Yamaha YZF 250 something I can't remember they are um, 
And what's the name of those? I can't remember. The carbon. In Intuition. Yeah, carbon discs. And uh, I modded so I got eight springs. And it's very easy to, to slip on the clutch and make it very easy to control. And uh, I can turn on the light so you can see it down there. I freshly just made some light hone work uh, because I'm about to change the new pistons and I want the rings to have something to bed into. And it's quite hard to show. But I'm running total duration main exhaust 196 or 195.5, doesn't matter. And 192 on the auxiliary and then 130, 134 and 136 and boost is also 136. These are TZR 3XV cylinders. Uh, you can read that right there, 3XV. So I can't get the YP VS to work, so I blocked it fully open. As it is a drag bike, it doesn't matter anyway. And uh, I've ported the B port. Yeah. I need something to point. The B port almost five millimeters wider than the original, and the uh, auxiliary exhaust about the triple the size. The main exhaust is almost untouched, actually. Uh, and then I have, uh, I can't show you now, but I have welded the uh, cases. See if I can see, maybe you can see, maybe there's some welding. From the other side, I welded, uh, reshaped the. Uh, crank house to get some more let's see like this flow from the intake up into the transfers a more more modern design what else uh, primary injectors is is uh, 430 cc's secondary is 630 um, And all yellow bolts you can see that's actually titanium <laughs> I had this all fasteners these ones I got them in titanium but um, I saved them for final mount this is just a mock-up now and I got titanium for all these ones and from the other side also and for the clutch cover yeah that was a little bit of uh, round up from how I um, have set this one up. I converted to O-ring seal here for uh, I forgot to mention. These are titanium studs and I got titanium nuts. And uh, yeah, this was a little bit of a spec, how it's specced up. So I'll, I'll end here and uh, maybe I'll release this later today. Bye.